like all those over 70, I'm uh, isolated and at home these days. Uh, for somebody who's naturally very active, it's a bit inconvenient, but it's nothing compared to the suffering that many others are undergoing in these days. Uh, I think of the seriously ill. I think of, for example, people who are bereaved and haven't really had a proper funeral service and yet they may be back even in isolation. I think of situations of families in economic difficulties, families who have to look after uh, loved ones who have, uh, have uh, particular needs, uh, families um, closed in very small confinement areas. And I think also of the, the sick, the, the elderly and the lonely. And we tend to forget, I think, that in our communities there's still many uh, lonely elderly people who have no relatives of their own and we have to find a way of reaching out to those people. Uh, in these days I've been calling uh, people on the telephone to see how they are and I'm amazed that the reaction of most of them is uh, we're doing all right and you ask why is that? Because the neighbours are looking after me, they're extremely, they're, they're very very good. Uh, good neighbourliness is a, a, a hallmark of Irish families and uh, it's, it's encouraging to see how families are, are um, res responding in the current situation. And our young people have been great in that. Now these, small, these are small gestures of solidarity. They're just as important as the big, the big challenges. Uh, obviously we have to thank those who are involved in uh, our, our healthcare uh, special, uh, specialists, those in the front line, doctors, nurses and carers, and indeed our, our government authorities who have been uh, really bringing us together and creating a spirit of unity. Uh, over these days I've been trying to reach out uh, to parishes uh, to provide them with uh, advice and prayer services and encouragement in what they're doing. And uh, online commu communication is a great blessing but there are over 200 priests in the Archdiocese of Dublin who are over the age of 70 and are therefore uh, uh, themselves in lockdown. And it puts a huge pressure on those priests who are remaining uh, in ministry. And you know, priests are like anybody else. They live with the same fears and anxieties and they need our support and our prayers. Holy Week is essential to the life of the church. Now, for me now, in 50 years of ministry, this will be the first year in which I would not have been able to participate or indeed at times lead the ceremonies of Holy Week. And I, I know that many priests feel very sad about this occasion for themselves and most Christians. Holy Week has always had a special role in Christian life. Because Holy Week isn't just about the ceremonies. Uh, the ceremonies are there to draw us into the essential dimension of our belief in Jesus Christ, uh, the way, the truth and the life. Holy, Holy Week is about a Jesus who emptied himself in order uh, to save us uh, and love for us. And his total self-giving was the thing that opened new life and resurrection for all humanity. So therefore Holy Week is very much at the centre of Christian hope. Christian hope reminds us always that even in moments of darkness, evil will not be overcome. Or evil will be overcome by, go by goodness and death is not the final word. So even in the current situation where the Holy Week liturgies will be celebrated behind closed doors, we have to find in our hearts ways to celebrate the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection and draw from that mystery um, uh, the strength to allow goodness to triumph in our lives. Thanks very much.